with more than 35 nations, 30,000 people, and a million components working together, we share one simple goal, to illuminate the way to new energy. It's been likened to the filter of a swimming pool and an oversized ashtray. It's been called alien in shape and hellish in its affinity for heat. Others describe it lovingly as a plasma toilet. But whatever your analogy of choice, the Eater Diverter is an impressive product of scientific engineering and logistic ingenuity designed to exhaust contaminated particles from the plasma to maintain the fusion reaction inside the tokamak. I understand analogy is, is important to uh, okay to communicate yeah but this analogy of uh, ashtray well is a bit is a bit, is a bit negative no we have uh, ashes from the plasma which are pumped away at the level of the divertor okay but to reduce the divertor to an ashtray i think it's a bit offending for this nice structure yeah the diverter one of its purposes is to let the particles that are in the plasma that get formed and left behind in the plasma that they'll get sent into these little gaps and then you have a diversion to ensure that the convection with the particle is, at, is here and not anywhere in the in the wall in the wall and then there's a specific little hole for them to come out and that way it's kind of helping uh, keep the plasma pure so diverter is uh, is like a heat exchanger. Why? Because this is in the in the, in the tokamak where the, um, the particles finally are touching the wall, and then um, it makes this uh, fantastic heat up to 20 megawatt per square meter in our uh, load specification. 20 megawatt per square meter is incredibly high. Terrible. You can imagine. So you need uh, technology able to extract this power, which is in one hand very robust, of course, and in other hand quite innovative. I mean, you need steel, a big steel structure to resist uh, with, a, with a cooling inside, of course, to remove the heat. So for that, we, we have this, this material, this is a, a, a tungsten with a, with, with a ring of copper inside. And we have many, many monoblocks like this in the diverter. And the goal is to, is to, to join these two uh, materials. So we need to, have to extract rapidly the, the thermal load. Uh, here. And we have the internal cooling of the plasma fitting units and avoid the melting of the dust. One way we found, let's say, is to promote turbulence on the water, which is circulating in the structure of the diverter to absorb the heat. For example, I just have this in hand, and with this kind of uh, swirl, you can increase the movement into the water and knowing that the heat flux is coming only from one side you help in removing the, the flux. So you have the inlet water going circulating along the cassette. You see the strange shape of the diverter with, with this kind of V. To define this shape you need a very deep understanding of plasma wall interaction, understand how the particles are moving around, what is the best angle, what is the best shape to ensure pumping. And here we are defining the geometry of the components, so we are always improving the components and we are always analyzing again and again the components in order to be sure that uh, the new design is uh, able to withstand the huge loads that we have. The cassette consists of four basic parts. This is the body and then we have the inner vertical target, it's at the inboard part of the cassette. IVT, OVT and the last one is the dome and then there's a bunch of diagnostics that also need to get assembled here, so a bunch of sensors and cables. We'll be receiving over 300 components from all over the world, and we have to somehow put them on here. The diverter it is a huge puzzle in itself because every single subcomponent is a, is a person, is a culture, is a history. The dome has a procurement agreement with uh, Russia, so RFDA. The dome will basically come in and go here on the cassette body. So DOM is not like a place the people live. DOM is just... <laughs> plasma, which is located above of the inverter cassette, uh, make influence on the inner target, on the outer target, and of course on the DOM. So the purpose of the DOM to get the thermal radiation from plasma that's why the structure is designed not on the limit, but close to the limit of uh, practical capacity. Next, we have the outer vertical target. There's a lot of tungsten monoblocks here. 
and they are procured with the Japanese DA. This is gonna go um, in here. The three, the main difficulty in such component. First one is a high heat flux technology. Second thing is a leak tightness as all the component water cooled. The last point is a high tolerance on the component geometry. And then we have inner vertical target. Essentially it has the same tungsten monoblocks on here. And this one is procured with F4E. So, and then this one just goes. So uh, at this time in 2020, we have, um, we have four uh, IVT prototypes uh, ongoing in Europe in Italy, uh, in Germany, and in France as well. And that's really important to get this feedback from the prototypes because we are facing no technological uh, and technical difficulties that we share with FOA and we find solutions, technical solutions. So suppliers are actually providing solutions. To check this, uh, this, this pass, this pass is checked in the Ephremov Institute, in the facility, I uh, facility, to, to validate this uh, technology. The principle of this test is to mimic loads to which the component is exposed in the machine. It was a long time ago, our partners in the, they produced so-called small-scale mockups of a real target, of a real PFU. The next step, uh, where we are now, is the performance test, so-called performance test, of the full-scale prototype with all the tolerances, with all the combinations, with all the challenges. So what we do, we manufacture a number of units, we mount it on an educated structure, we send it to the test facility where we expose it to the operating conditions which mimic the real conditions in the machine. And uh, we have performed this test for the Japanese targets one year ago and of 2019, we have completed this major step uh, for one of the European suppliers. Now we do the same test for Russian. This is a major step which allows us to qualify the technology before the series production can start. The European manufacturers are also providing uh, other PFU, small scale ether like PFU, actively cooled, which are a bit smaller than the full IVT PFUs, but actually still relevant. And this uh, small PFU will be tested uh, just next door in CEA by the West Joint Team. So uh, this PFU will actually sustain a real plasma load and we will learn a lot from these experiments uh, done in West under long pulse, long plasma pulse. Although the ITER vacuum vessel is so heavily guarded with plasma facing armor, hundreds of sensors will still peek between the cracks to monitor the conditions inside and transmit data to scientists in the ITER control room. Many such diagnostic and operational instruments interface directly with the diverter using state-of-the-art fiber optic cable technology. For our purposes, we need to measure mechanical properties and install a set of sensors, for example, strain sensors, temperature sensors, displacement sensors. The purpose of these measurements is to understand the behavior, structural behavior of these components. So we should have sensors, cables, special equipment to penetrate the vacuum boundaries through the vacuum vessel, because, well, for it, nothing is easy, nothing is simple. Uh, optical fiber sensors uh, may work under great radiation, uh, not only gamma, very extreme uh, neutron irradiation. For example, these sensors was tested uh, up to one gigagray uh, in uh, Kazakhstan reactor. Not exist such type sensors <laughs> anywhere. Once the cassette assemblies are fitted with plasma facing components and sensors, they must then be inserted into the tokamak with robotic handling tools through the narrow ports of the vacuum vessel onto carefully aligned rails. So researchers at the VTT Technical Research Center in Tampere, Finland, spent years practicing with a full-scale mock-up of a fully loaded cassette assembly on their diverter test platform. As you can see, this is the penetration on the vacuum vessel and it's passing just a few millimeters from the bottom, a few millimeters from the roof of the, of the port. So we have to properly define the geometry with a defined tolerances in the assembly drawing. Then when the robot will take the component, it could do it uh, properly. As the diverter section nears the end of the prototyping phase, this month, members of the team visited CEA Katarash, next door to the ITER worksite in France, 
where as part of a site support agreement between ITER and the French government, a cassette body prototype procured by F4E and built by the French-Italian firm Sinem Simic recently underwent final qualification and approval. So this is a diverter team in front of a piece of hardware here. This is a cassette body prototype and we are very happy to see this, you know, dealing with paper every day and uh, this is changing a lot so we can touch this and we are so proud of this first component. So that's why everybody has bows because we, you cannot refrain from going and <laughs> touching the, the component physically. It's always fun and it's rewarding to be able to actually see the component after years and years of paperwork and prototyping and so on. But it's also we're learning and we're seeing, oh, I need to go and look at that again. Oh, what are we doing there? So we did the repetition of some of the dimensional inspection on the components. And we also uh, tested the component for leak, very, very uh, stringent uh, criteria. And uh, now we can say that both of them have been uh, passed uh, successfully, which is great. This is the real end of the, let's say, of this loop of producing a prototype, where we have first uh, verified that we can manufacture the components that will allow uh, us to transfer the ownership of the component from F4E to IO. So we finally say, okay, this is good. You have done a great job. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the beginning. We have to build 58 like this. 54 to put in the Dokamak and four as pairs. So it's a long way now. We already know that it's going to require unique solutions because there's a difference between what we plan and design and then what we receive and what we get as as-built components. I don't like surprises, but life gives these surprises for us. That's why all our life is to find the compromise between what we want and what is possible to do in reasonable time. So our Time frame is 2028, but 2028 is tomorrow if you look at our schedule. So if you want to keep this pace, you need a good team. The Divertor team, uh, we are all very different, but uh, I, I actually like working with all these people. Yeah, except Alain, no sorry, <laughs> it's just a joke, you can get yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> like Sophie said, this is a very, very nice uh, environment to work. First, we. We work for a very nice project, great project in the world. In, in our team, yes, you are, you are very, a uh, lot of people with uh, different educations. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, support be between us. And I like that. Different parts, different pieces that are very unique. Each one has its own requirements, its own almost personality. I'm very lucky. I have a fantastic team. It's clear. No, I'm not saying this because this is an interview and, uh, and blah, blah. No, look, uh, I have a mix of women and men, of young and old, of uh, European, Japanese, American, Russian. It's amazing to see that how after, after years, I'm here since 10 years now, we are not um, fed up with this. It's exciting every day. Well, I've been in Asia already 12 years and uh, I had uh, a lot of interaction with different people, different culture, background, uh, how to uh, argue and how to bring a conclusion together this is very interesting. And we work in now practically 10 years with these people, we communicate with each other of course because uh, similar problem, similar technical uh, solution. As a mechanical engineer to work on Diverto is something amazing, it's a motivation to arrive to work and see that you have a new challenge to face and you have to find a new solution to, to solve the issue. Each day you face some uh, new tasks that you still uh, don't know how to solve. On mechanics, on hydraulics, on neutronics, on uh, remote handling. We should work on all these topics in parallel, so it's quite uh, exciting. This is the reason we are engineers. <laughs> yeah. Bonjour, welcome. Uh, that's, uh, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode about the diverter section. Hope you learned something. I certainly learned a lot in the process of making this and uh, interviewing everybody. And I feel like the diverter is my new favorite component here at ITER, but it's really not fair because there's just so many cool components and stuff here, uh, but it's just, it's the new one. Oh, so. Uh, you may notice Tomomi's not with me today. She's off in, in Japan. So uh, I played this video on the green screen here to hopefully distract you 
from the fact that it's just me this time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't actually have a lot of time for questions this week, but please keep them coming. Uh, I really just want to give you an idea of what is coming next on Eater Now. So uh, for example, the next couple episodes will be, we took a field trip, so we got off the Eater work site, went uh, just a few feet down the road, a few meters, I should say, <laughs> um, uh, to CEA Katarash. So if you don't know, CEA, and I'm gonna to try to say this in French, forgive me in advance, but it's the Commissariat à l'énergie atomique et ou énergie alternative. Forgive me, uh, the Alternative Energy and Atomic Energy Commission of France, CEA. Uh, they have many facilities, research facilities across the country of France. CEA Catarache, it's right next door. I've been uh, over there a couple times the last few weeks and visiting with some really wonderful scientists, engineers, and people over there. Got to stand on top. They have the tokamak too. It's called the West Tokamak. It's smaller uh, than Eater, but uh, they're doing tests over there, not just with the tokamak, but with all kinds of uh, facilities and stuff they have. So we got a couple cool episodes coming out about that soon. And then uh, another one I'm really excited about, which might even rival the diverter as my new favorite component, uh, the tokamak cooling system. So you uh, got a glimpse of how the, the cooling system works in this episode with the actively cooled pipes, the water going through the pipes and all that. But what happens to that water as it leaves the tokamak at 120 degrees Celsius, where does it go? Well, we'll tell you in the next uh, episode after our CEA episodes about the tokamak cooling system. So uh, it's all very interesting stuff and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got many more videos coming up. Hope you'll be interested and uh, stick with us and uh, we'll keep trying to come up with some fun backgrounds here. And please keep sending your comments, questions, suggestions. We're all in this together. We truly couldn't do it without you. So thank you for your support and your interest. And um, see you next time. Thank you very much on Eater Now. Merci beaucoup, au revoir.